Hello everyone, Golden Nova here, and it's time for Patron Week, where the Nebula Navigators of my Patreon come together and vote on what archetype I cover that month. And we're starting the year with an archetype that might be a bit of a sore subject to some duelists. Luna Lights debuted in the May 2016 core set Shining Victories, and was piloted in the Arc V anime by Selena, the Fusion Dimension counterpart of Zuzu Boyle and Agent of Academia. Well, until she wasn't. And like their Dimension of Origin, Lunalites are very, very proficient with fusion summoning, though they do end up making great material for other summons as well. In fact, they're so good that they found themselves being splashed into a variety of other decks, from Zodiacs to Orcist. In fact, they might have been a bit too good, but we'll get into that in a bit. For now, let's catalog our cast so we know who's performing what, set the stage for their grand finale, then see what moves we can add to enhance the mystique of our majestic menagerie. It's time to grab the spotlight with Luna Light. But before we continue, a quick reminder to please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and the first stop on our trip is 20k, which means we're incredibly close to unlocking You Say Explained, where we'll be covering Junks, Stardust, and whatever other cards can help us rev it up! We've also got our Discord, where we are in full Master Duel fever. You can also follow me on Twitch, where you can join me for viewer duels and progression polls pulls. And don't forget about my Patreon, where you can gain access to my videos early, reach some of these milestones, as well as helping to determine which explained videos I make. Thank you all so much for watching, and now, back to the video. So, what's the deal with Lunalites? Well, they're a series of dark, and some light, beast warrior monsters that excel at fusion summoning. But what do you do with those fusions? Well, as expected from a series of graceful, elegant dancers, they move around the battlefield before mercilessly smashing in your opponent's face with huge stats and multiple attacks. Let's go over the cast that makes this all possible, starting with our darks. Lunalite Black Sheep is a level 2 monster with 100 attack and 600 defense, and you can discard them to either add a Lunalite monster from your grave to your hand, except another copy of itself, or add a copy of Polymerization from your deck to your hand. And if sent to the grave as fusion material for any fusion summon, you can add to your hand a face-up Lunalite Pendulum monster from your extra deck, or any Lunalite in your grave. Yeah, we've got pendulums coming up, so uh, be ready for that. It's nice to have a searcher for polymerization, since the deck didn't have its own dedicated fusion spell for a long time. And as Fluffle players will tell you, having material that buys back your cards is great for your card economy and chain blocking. But it was actually its performance in Zodiacs that put Black Sheep on the map. At one time, Zodiacs ran this card because of its ability to search Fusion Substitute, which is always counted as polymerization, even while in the deck which by extension made it searchable by Fire Formation 10 key because, you know, Beast Warrior. Zodiacs loved its level 4 material so much, and the rank 4 XCs they could make, that they were hard summoning Elder Entity Norden, and Substitute had the added benefit of recycling that Norden while drawing a card. Now with Norden banned, Fusion Substitute has faded into the annals of history along with Black Sheep's Splash ability. But that just goes to show that, despite being the black sheep of the troop, they have no problem fitting in. Lunalite White Rabbit has 800 attack and defense, and when normal summoned, you can target a Lunalite monster in your grave, except another copy of itself, and special summon it in defense position. And once per turn, you can target spells and traps your opponent controls up to the number of Lunalite cards you control, and return them to the hand. And when doing this, make sure you count any Lunalite spells and traps you have on the field, because White Rabbit counts cards, not monsters. Now, a lot of our fusions can only be fielded by Fusion Summon, so you can't revive them on the cheap with Rabbit, but we have a lot of main deck options that will help you get there. And the ability to bounce your opponent's back row before proceeding with your game plan is a great way to make sure you push your plays through and get the jump on your opponent. Lunalite Purple Butterfly is a level 3 monster with 1000 attack and defense, and you can send them from your hand or field to the grave, then target a Lunalite monster you control, giving that target 1000 attack until the end of the turn. You can also banish this card from your grave to special summon a Lunalite monster from your hand. So Butterfly acts as an extender, getting more Lunalites out of your hand to continue your plays, and if you manage to give that 1000 attack to your big fusions, then all the better. Purple Butterfly helps you be extremely aggressive, casting aside any pretense of defense, which is appropriate since it's long gotten out of its cocoon, so no metapod tactics here. 
Lunalite Blue Cat is a level 4 monster with 1600 attack and 1200 defense, and if special summoned, you can target a Lunalite monster you control, except a copy of itself, and the target's attack becomes double its original attack until the end of the turn. And if Blue Cat is destroyed by battle or card effect while on the field, you can special summon a Lunalite from your deck. This does not preclude itself, so if destroyed, you can summon another copy of Blue Cat to trigger the effect. And considering how big our fusions are, doubling their attack is a game-ending maneuver. But good luck pulling this off when you need it. Every time I try to do this, my cat just climbs on some shelves. Lunalite Crimson Fox is a level 4 monster with 1800 attack and 600 defense, and if sent to the grave by a card effect, you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls and change its attack to 0 until the end of that turn. And when a card or effect is activated that targets any number of Lunalite monsters you control as a quick effect, you can banish this card from your grave to negate the activation, and if you do, each player gains a thousand life points. So you can insulate your board from targeting effects while also setting up your OTKs by taking attack off of your opponent's board. And while the life point gain for your opponent seems lame, we're going to be gaining a titanic amount of attack power over the course of a combo. So even if you end up having to use all three crimson in one turn, it won't impact you much. Besides, how else would you suggest we liven up this performance? Lunalite Yellow Martin is a level 4 monster with 800 attack and 2000 defense, and if this card is in your hand or grave, you can target a Lunalite card you control, except another copy of itself, return that target to the hand, and if you do, special summon this card in defense position, but banish Martin if it leaves the field. And if this card is sent to the grave by a card effect, you can add a Lunalite Speller Trap from your deck to your hand. So this means you can get the Surge after they're used as fusion material, but also when sent by generic means like Foolish Burial. Now, we don't have a lot of targets to search, including a target we really should be able to get, but the ones we can are very, very important. And their revival effect is great for resetting your on summon effects while maintaining a healthy amount of fusion material, or Xyz material, since once it's used as overlay material, it won't be banish itself. Now, to cap this off, I gotta admit, I didn't know what a Martin was before I started this video, so I looked it up and, well, here you go. You're welcome, by the way. Lunalite Emerald Bird is a level 4 monster with 1200 attack and 1000 defense, and if normal or special summoned, you can send a Lunalite card from your hand to the grave, and if you do, you draw a card. And if sent to the grave by a card effect, you can target a level 4 or lower Lunalite monster that's banished or in your grave and special summon it in defense position, but its effects are negated. So when used as fusion material, you can get one of the material monsters back. And since its on summon effect sends the Lunalite card as an effect, it'll trigger Yellow Martin. So, despite being one of the newer members of the team, Emerald Bird is far from green. Lunalite Kaleido Chick is a level 4 monster with 1400 attack and 800 defense, and once per turn, you can send a Lunalite monster from your deck or extra deck to the grave, and the name of this face-up card on the field is treated as the sent monsters if used as fusion material this turn. And if sent to the grave by a card effect, you can add a polymerization from your grave to your hand. And if banished, you can activate an effect that keeps your opponent's cards and effects from activating during the battle phase that turn. Kaleido Chick is the linchpin of modern Lunalite strategies. You can send Yellow Martin to set up its own special summon effect, though notably not its spell and trap surge since it's sent to the grave as cost. But one of my favorite uses is sending cards from the extra deck to the grave. See, we have a few fusions that work kind of like a synchro climb. They have a specific fusion material that they need, but they're other fusions. So generally, you're fusion summoning one just to get to the next one. But Kaleido Chick can effectively skip you ahead in that line. And while its first effect has a once per turn clause, it doesn't extend to other copies. So the more Kaleido Chicks you play in a turn, or bounce the ones you already have, then resummon them, the more times you can activate that effect. And with a fusion effect we'll be getting into later, that banishes your material, triggering the battle phase effect freeze is super easy. So next time you're rooting through Master Duel to get some staples, make sure you pick up some chicks. Okay, now it's time to cover our light main deck monsters, who just so happen to be Pendulum Monsters. And the first one has been on people's minds for quite some time. Lunalite Tiger is a level 3 monster with 1200 attack and 800 defense, with a pendulum scale of 5. As a pendulum spell, once per turn, you can target a Lunalite monster in your grave and special summon it, but it can't attack, its effects are negated, and it's destroyed during the end phase. As a monster, if destroyed by battle or card effect while on the field, though it does trigger if destroyed in the pendulum scale, you can target a Lunalite monster in your grave and special summon it. This fairly unassuming monster... is banned, at least in the TCG. Why? Well, 
Curiously, Tiger's Pendulum Effect does not have a hard once per turn clause. On the surface, that's still reasonable, getting an extra material for fusion summons isn't so bad. There's a limit to the ceiling of power for fusions that's set by the kinds of monsters that can be used as fusion material for it. Lynx, on the other hand, have no such limit. While many do exist that require specific materials, it's far more likely that the barrier to entry is set at the very, very low effect monster scale, which only really serves to lock out tokens. And while Tiger can only reborn once while on the field, a wide infrastructure exists to get around that. Yellow Martin, for instance, is an on-theme way to put a Luna Light card from your field back into your hand. So if you activate Tiger, then bounce it back with Yellow Martin, you can activate Tiger again. What happens if you get Zephyros into the grave? Well, you can use its effect to revive itself, which bounces Tiger again. And if you have an effect that destroys Tiger, you get another Grave Summon. Then if you have a way to put it back into your hand, you can activate it again. And all of this can be funneled into more and more powerful Link monsters, each giving you more advantage as you add one more rung onto the ladder. Famously, this card was utilized to staggering effect when paired with Orcus, helping to bring about the fabled Orcus combo. Many people have advocated that Tiger can come off the Forbidden list, the now forbidden status of Nightmare Mermaid sharply declining the favorability of Orcist, and while the January 2022 ban list is dangerously close to releasing at time of recording, I would say that these hopes are, unfortunately, ill-founded. The structure that allows for this kind of summon looping is still intact. Yellow Martin and Kaleido Chick are still as playable as ever, so if we're not going to Mermaid, into Nightmare Orcist, into all manner of extenders, it's just going to be another plug-and-play material generator for the game's various and generic Link 4s, at best. Sorry, Luna Light pilots. I know you didn't get a fair shake out of this, trust me, I know your pain, but Tiger is just a catastrophe waiting to happen. And now... It's time for Delilah's Diatribes. Today's subject, Format Foibles. Hey folks, it's Delilah, and these are my diatribes. And you know what? Not having Luna Light Tiger fucking sucks! We see this all the time where cards are meant for a small, not even rogue, archetype gets scooped up by a big meta deck and gets hit on the ban list because of it. Ben 10's now at 1 because of Drytron, Jet Synchron is banned because of Link Climbing Garbage, and Brilliant Fusion because no one can be satisfied with one normal summon. But I'm actually okay with Brilliant Fusion because it makes Nova upset. I might not be as pissed if we had some kind of alternative, but Konami hasn't really followed through on implementing any kind of variety. I mean, sure, Dual Links and Speed Duel and Rush Jewels exist, but those aren't different ways to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Those are different games that use Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. Trust me, there's a difference. Like, traditional format exists, but Konami has supported, like, one tournament for it. And despite the incredibly powerful combos and FTKs, it's still the only one that lets you use cards that got unfairly banned! Now, I know that Flyer went around a little while ago talking about new formats that official tournament stores can use, but that's, that's all it was. A Flyer. And we haven't seen any more details about them. Heart of the Underdog seems close to what we need, a format that bans powerful cards to let lower decks shine, but we don't know anything about the specifics. How exactly do you keep the higher powered archetypes out of play? Will it still use the current ban list, keep you from playing things like Tiger? And will it get any better support than traditional? Basically, Heart of the Underdog is a good start, but we have to go even further until we get at least two formats, at least, one that supports the hyper-competitive scene and one more casual, then we're gonna keep having a lot of frustrated players. Because I also think it's unfair for, you know, any high-competitive players to get any fuss over because it's something that they need for their game as well. They need cards like Tiger and Ben 10 Band because that's part of their comp high-competitive play. But it also sucks for the other one. So, we need something in the middle. In traditional format, ain't it, Chief? I mean, not the current support it's getting right now. Lunalight Wolf is a level 6 monster with 2,000 attack and 1,800 defense with a scale of 1. As a pendulum scale, you can't pendulum summon monsters, except Lunalites, an effect that can't be negated. Once per turn, you can fusion summon a Lunalite fusion monster from your extra deck by banishing material listed on it from your field or grave. And as a monster, it provides piercing damage to all Lunalites. This is pretty useful, as the best way to keep you from closing out the game with your beatdown strategy is to throw as many blockers at your monsters as possible. Wolf has seen this tactic and finds it lacking. 
but the most important part about them is their pendulum effect, essentially acting as a miracle fusion for your theme. It stacks incredibly well with Kaleido Chick, since not only does the little birdie let you skip ahead in your fusion lineup, Wolf essentially lets you double dip on that, not to mention makes your more cost-effective fusions a little more efficient. Combine that with the possibility of Pendulum summoning back Luna Light Tiger, and you've got the makings of a hair-raising battle plan. Alright, we've seen the opening act, now it's time for the main event, our fusion monsters. Like our non-pendulums, they're all dark attribute, and with the exception of our first performer, they must be fusion summoned, and any that lists specific material must be fusion summoned with those cards. Though this particular restriction does mean you can get around it with name substitution, though effects like Muddy Mud Dragon won't work since it does not mimic the name. First up is Lunalite Cat Dancer, a level 7 monster with 2400 attack and 2000 defense, requiring any two Lunalite monsters as material. Cat Dancer can't be destroyed by battle, and once per turn during your main phase 1, you can tribute another Lunalite monster, and for the rest of the turn, the first time each monster your opponent controls would be destroyed by battle, it is not. Also, this card can attack all monsters your opponent controls twice each this turn. And if this card declares an attack, you can burn your opponent for 100 points of damage. This is probably the most convoluted of our effects, but can still hit really hard. Giving your opponent's monsters battle destruction immunity feels really off, but because Cat Dancer then gets the two attacks needed to actually take them out, it's effectively a weird way to give double battle damage. In fact, it's even a little more powerful than that, considering that 100 point burn per attack can stack up pretty quickly. And of course, if we look at it thematically, it makes perfect sense, because if there's one thing cats love to do, it's play with their food. Lunalite Panther Dancer is a level 8 monster with 2800 attack and 2500 defense, requiring Cat Dancer and any other Lunalite monster as material, and cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. And once per turn during your main phase 1, you can activate the same effect as Cat Dancer, though you don't have to tribute a Lunalite monster as cost. You also don't burn on every attack, but rather, Panther Dancer gains 200 attack for each monster they destroy until the end of that battle phase. So you don't get the upfront damage, but because of Panther's increased stats, it ends up being slightly more damage. And I'd also argue that effect destruction protection is much more useful than battle protection. So they're much better suited at dancing circles around your opponent. Lunalite Leo Dancer is a level 10 monster with 3500 attack and 3000 defense, and can't be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects. They require Panther Dancer and any other two Lunalite monsters as material, and they can make an unconditional second attack during each battle phase. And once per turn, at the end of the damage step, if this card attacks a monster, you can destroy all special summon monsters your opponent controls. It doesn't even have to beat the monster it attacked, that's so wild! So if you attack into one of your opponent's normal summoned monsters, and none of their special summoned ones have effect destruction protection, then you've cleared the way for 3500 more points of direct damage. And that's not including any buffs that they might have received from cards like Purple Butterfly or Blue Cat. 3500 is exceptional, but having a 7k double attacker is the definition of lethal. Not to mention how hard they can be to interact with. They're completely ruthless and not just on the battlefield. I hear that Leo Dancer convinced the Forbidden and Limited List committee to axe Broadbull, but hey, what can you do? Leos and Tauruses be like that sometimes. Our last fusion is also our latest addition, Lunalite Saber Dancer, a level 9 monster with 3000 attack and 2600 defense, requiring 3 Lunalite monsters as material. They gain 200 attack for each beast warrior in the grave or is banished, and your opponent cannot target Saber Dancer with card effects. And during the main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the grave, you can banish Saber Dancer from your grave, then target a fusion monster you control, and it gains 3000 attack until the end of this turn. Good Golly, and I thought the Alistair boost was ridiculous. Saber Dancer cranks up the lethality of your Lunalite fusions to 11, as any multi-attacker with 5,000 or more attack is primed to finish the game out of nowhere. And since Kaleido Chick can send monsters from the extra deck to the grave as well, it's not that hard to set up. Though if you have to summon them, Saber Dancer can get the job done too. Whether you sent their fusion material to the grave or banished it with Wolf, they're gonna hit the field with at least 3,600 attack, meaning this Saber's bound to rattle your opponent. Alright, that's all of our monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps, the first of which I'm... 
very frustrated with. Luna Light Perfume, not to be misread as Luna Light Perfume, is a normal spell that targets a Luna Light monster in your grave and special summons it. You can also banish this card from your grave and discard a card to add a Luna Light monster from your deck to your hand. This card is pretty good. Getting a free revival means Kaleido Chick, Yellow Martin, and Blue Cat activations. But because of that little space right here, it's not technically a Luna Light card, so you can't search it with Yellow Martin, and you can't discard it with Emerald Bird to immediately get the Grave Effect. It is the most frustrating thing, but it's certainly not enough of a pain to leave out of your deck lists, because Revival and Hand Fixing are pretty important for any deck, especially because it lacks any hard once per turn clauses. Oh, and you know, it helps you smell nice. Rule books were updated for a reason, after all. Luna Light Fusion is a normal spell that fusion summons a Luna Light Fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as fusion material. And if your opponent controls a monster that was special summoned from the extra deck, you can also use a Luna Light monster in your deck or extra deck as fusion material. Now this card is searchable by Yellow Martin, and it's fantastic. In general, it's just a polymerization, but it's got a bit of a Shadal fusion twist to it, letting you cheat out some material. And since you can also pull from the extra deck, it has the same kind of ladder skipping ability that Wolf and Kaleido Chick have, letting you go straight into the bombastic ballet brawler, Leo Dancer. You also have the option of sending Yellow Martin from deck to grave, which would end up searching you another Luna Light Fusion to set up for next turn. It's the kind of card that really sends the deck's power level to the moon! Nope, can't say that either. God, I hate NFTs. Luna Light Reincarnation Dance is a normal trap that triggers if any number of monsters you control are destroyed by battle or card effect, adding up to two Luna Light monsters from your deck to your hand. Um... I mean, in theory this card is nice. It's essentially a searcher that goes even in card economy, whatever monster you lost and the trap itself are two Luna Lights, but the activation condition isn't very flexible, being a trap means it's super slow, and if you want to search it, it's gonna be highly telegraphed. The art is admittedly very gorgeous, but I think your efforts to fight evil by moonlight, and maybe even find love by daylight, would be better applied elsewhere. Our last card is Luna Light Serenade Dance, a continuous trap that has an effect which triggers when any number of monsters are fusion summoned to your field, except during the damage step. You target one of those fusion monsters and apply these effects in sequence. One, you special summon a Luna Light token to your opponent's side of the field, which is a level 4 Dark Beast Warrior with 2000 attack and defense. Then two, the fusion monster you targeted gains 500 attack for each monster your opponent controls, even if Serenade Dance leaves the field. You can also banish this card from your grave during your main phase, and on resolution you send a card from your hand to the grave, and if you do, special summon a Luna Light monster from your deck. This makes for excellent discard fodder for anything, because it'll translate into a Luna Light on field. And since it discards cards generically, you can even discard perfume with this. The on field effect is... I believe meant to bolster the power of the multi-attack fusions, because even at a base 2000 stat line, that token isn't standing up to any of them. But it's certainly not worth the effort, considering all the great attack boosting effects we already have at our disposal. So I'd recommend sending this to the grave as soon as possible, before Tom Hooper decides to pull a cats and give the entire archetype the CGI treatment. Okay, so that's all the Luna Light cards, but what do we do with them? Well, if the fusions didn't bring it home enough for you, we are on the beatdown. Any kind of interaction this deck has is purely installed to help make our plays more resilient, not to stymie our opponent. So we'll want to add as many good generic hand traps and other pieces of interaction to clear the way for a gigantic Leo Dancer to clean up your opponent's life points. So what can we play to help them out? Well, I'm gonna get the meta answer out of the way really quick so we can rip the band-aid off. The Verte Anaconda package works great here. Branded Fusion isn't going to lock you out of most anything you were looking to do, and because we natively have Lights and Darks in the deck, splashing in some Albazes means you can go into Albion, into Lubellion, into Mirror Jade without batting an eye, giving you a quick form of interaction on your opponent's turn. And if you send Alba Renatus with their effect, you can even search Luna Light Fusion as well. Or grab Fusion Destiny. Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer is gonna be a part of this format until something is done about that combo, so if you can't beat them, you might as well join them. Heck, it even gives you a way to activate Reincarnation Dance because now you have a quick effect that can destroy your monsters on your own terms. I still wouldn't recommend playing it, but it's there. And if Tiger ever does come off the list, then making Verte is gonna slot into most play sequences you were gonna do anyway. And hey, are those 
Beast Warrior monsters? Then by Jove, we've got Tri-Brigade Synergies. And by synergies, I mean you get another non-targeting banishing effect. The grave linking effects of your Tri-Brigades might conflict with Wolf's Miracle Fusion, but I like to think of it as synergizing very well with Lunalite Fusion, as well as basically every other fusion effect we have. Plus, banishing a whole bunch of monsters for a fusion summon sounds pretty nice with Revolt. As a silly tech pick, well... Okay, this is probably the least silly that I've ever committed to in a video. Surprisingly, there's not a lot of Beast Warrior fusion support out there. So, before we summon those newfangled Beerer Jace, the Nice Glade Dragon, or Employer Phoenix Fact Sorcerer, we could use two level fours to make Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Tiger King. It grabs you the now limited tanky for more searches, and can non-targeting negate an opponent's entire board, thus stripping monsters of their protections or forcing out interaction. Either way, your opponent's gonna have a hard time financially recovering from that. And that's all I've got to say about Lunalites. They're a strong fusion strategy that can take games out of nowhere, suffering from the all-too-common affliction of Genericitis, which has kept Tiger, arguably their best card, in quarantine until they can find a way to reintroduce it without infecting everything. But, even without, the deck can make a fine showing on the battlefield, as well as the stage, which will always keep your opponent on their toes. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Do you think Lunalite have what it takes to pummel their opponents with pirouettes, or are they going to need to spend a bit more time reviewing their dance steps? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like this video to show your support, subscribe so you don't miss an episode, and share this video with someone you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. This video was sponsored by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh!, Nebula Navigators, Adam Zagedel, Benjamin Meisner, Eric, Gloomba331, Howling Zangetsu, John Manji, Panther J, Shooting Star3300, Sun Sorrow, The Wizard Moose and the Fresh Prince of Conair, Cosmic Crusaders, Bear Sharktopus Studios, Chaz Ghost, Colin Todd, Manga Pages, RGS and the Legendary Raven, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. If you'd like to be a part of these credits, as well as help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s archetypes, as well as getting these episodes earlier than anyone else, please check out my Patreon links in the description to see if I have anything you'd like on offer. And if you want to hear me talk about another deck that values its fusion summons, check out this video I did covering Invoked. And if you want to see two yu gi tubers going at it, check out Noah Jenk and I's latest series, Progression Polls, where your voice shapes the format. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.